Hello and welcome to this Denim Group ThreadFix webcast. I'm your host, Nan Palomero of Denim Group. During the presentation, all participants will be in listen-only mode and we ask that you mute your phones. Following the presentation, we will conduct a question and answer session. At that time, if you have a question, please use the chat feature on your screen. As a reminder, this conference is being recorded and will be available soon. Today's speaker, Dan Cornell, is a globally recognized application security expert. He holds over 15 years of experience architecting, developing, and securing web-based software systems. As CTO and principal at Denim Group, he leads a technology team to help Fortune 500 companies and government organizations integrate security throughout the development process. I would now like to turn it over to Dan for the presentation. Howdy, everybody. Uh, today, we'll be talking about ThreadFix uh, in general, but also looking at specifically at the 2.1 release and some of the new features and capabilities that we have uh, that we've integrated in this most recent release. And we'll be looking at how you can use ThreadFix uh, along with other the other scanning technologies, other activities that you have. Um, how you can use all of this together to help run your application security program. Uh, just a little bit of background uh, about myself, and Anand, thank you very much. Uh, I'm Dan Cornell, one of the founders here at Denim Group, and I'm the CTO. And I'm a software developer by background. Um, you know, originally, I spent some time working in uh, early server-side Java, uh, similarly with early server-side.net. Um, but for the past eight or nine years, my focus has really been on working with organizations to help them understand the impact that the development teams and their organizations have on the organization security posture and to help them craft programs where they can more repeatedly create secure software. I'm involved with OWASP, uh, specifically the San Antonio chapter. And a little bit of background about Denver, we do uh, a lot of software development. So we actually build systems that have uh, typically you know, certain security, survivability, or compliance requirements. And then we help organizations deal with the security implications of the software that they're building you know, by doing security code reviews, application penetration tests, as well as a lot of training for developers on how they can build secure systems. Uh, it's a very simple agenda today. I'll just provide a little bit of background about, uh, uh, you know, about what we're doing with ThreadFix. And then we'll go through the common use case for ThreadFix, just kind of stepping through piece by piece. And along the way, we'll highlight what's new in ThreadFix 2.1. Uh, and in the end, we'll talk a little bit about what's next. And so for people who are already familiar with ThreadFix, we will be recovering probably some, some, uh, some familiar ground. Uh, hopefully, you'll be uh, uh, delighted with some of the user experience and user interface changes that we've made. That's been an area of focus. Um, and for folks that are new to ThreadFix, uh, again, you'll hopefully get a good overview of the different capabilities of the ThreadFix and how it fits into an application security program. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about what's next, and if folks um, you know, on, the, on the chat have questions about what's next, um, you know, more specifically than what we talk about, please feel free to ask and we'll do our best to answer. <clears throat> and so, one of the things that we've done with ThreadFix <clears throat> is to help set up an environment where you can interact with all the different technologies and activities that you are, uh, that you're using to enforce your software security program. And so we allow you to work with different dynamic scanners, with static scanners, we allow you to connect to accounts you might have on the, uh, the, the uh, big software as a service testing platforms. Uh, we also let you interact with IDS or IPS systems or web application firewalls. Uh, as well as defect tracking systems. And so a big focus of ours with ThreadFix has been to allow organizations to manage their application security program regardless of which vendor or, as is more typical, which vendors they're working with uh, in order to provide the technology doing the different testing as well as resolution activities that they're, uh, that they're engaged in. Um, and as we'll see, that's something that we've pushed even farther here with ThreadFix in the 2.1 release. Uh, this is a page that just has a little bit more graphical view of that. But again, a big focus for us in developing ThreadFix has been to make this vulnerability management unified across the different, uh, the different technologies that you're using. And so as, a, as an analyst or as a manager running a software security program, we want you to be able to see in a single pane of glass, if you will, in a single place, all the different testing activities that you have, the results of those, and a unified, simplified view so that you can drive these vulnerabilities through resolution and so that you can report in a unified way across your program. 
So a big thing that we did in ThreadFix 2.1 is we added support for a number of new technologies. On the scanning side, we added support for Sendzik or Trustwave's uh, Hailstorm product. Uh, we also added support for Checkmarks, the uh, static analysis product. When we look at software developer defect tracking systems that we support, we uh, added support for HP Quality Center as well as version 1. Um, and in a very exciting thing that we uh, had the opportunity to do, uh, we added support for Riverbed's Stingray Web Application Firewall. And something that was really exciting about that particular inter interaction is the folks at Riverbed actually developed this support and contributed it to the project. And so, again, while we're very excited to go out and support additional technologies, um, something that was very interesting uh, or very gratifying for us with the 2.1 release is to have the opportunity to work with members of the Thread fixed community, um, folks that are helping to, you know, contribute to the support to make sure that we support the broad range of the market-leading technologies in the application security space. Now, under the hood, to allow organizations to create support if they have custom scanning tools they've developed, we've also made the architecture for scanners uh, much more plug-in friendly so that people can develop a support for scanning technologies independent of the ones that ThreadFix supports natively that can either be used internally, you know, only in-house at that organization, uh, or they could also, uh, you know, with their option, contribute support for those uh, scanners back to the project. And the real benefit for organizations is, you know, as we build out support for these additional market-leading technologies is, again, regardless of what your technology stack looks like or which vendor or vendors you're working with, we want ThreadFix to be there to help support the business process of creating this secure software in a repeatable manner. And we want to make sure that for all the different vendors and all the different technologies you're working with, those all integrate seamlessly uh, you know, inside of the ThreadFix environment. So with ThreadFix, the first thing ThreadFix lets you do is to create a consolidated view of all of the applications that you have and the vulnerabilities that you've identified that are currently open in your applications. <clears throat> and we'll spend a lot of time switching back and forth between slides and demo here. I think uh, you know, a, a lot of times it's easier to see um, you know, when you look at this from a standpoint of, uh, of an actual demonstration, look at the interaction. So if we go and log into ThreadFix here, you know, what you see is you've got a dashboard of, you know, what is the current state of our software security program. Uh, let's look at some trending. Are we trending with more vulnerabilities or fewer vulnerabilities? And also let's highlight the most vulnerable applications. And so let's, you know, let's identify up front which applications have the most and the most serious vulnerabilities. Uh, you can also, from the dashboard, see an overview of, you know, recent uploads, recent comments, so you get a feel for the activity going on in the system. And also from a uh, ThreadFix 2.1 standpoint, for the folks that are familiar with earlier versions, you'll notice that we've uh, shifted over to a uh, more consistent uh, coloring scheme. We've, uh, you know, made some visual improvements in the, you know, in the different, uh, uh, you know, ways that we do reporting. And so, what you do inside of ThreadFix, or at a high level, ThreadFix allows you to manage your portfolio of applications. <clears throat> so you probably have different teams in your organization that are responsible for different applications. This lets you lay out that application portfolio so that you can see all the different teams you have developing software, as well as all of the applications for each of those teams and, and the current security state of these different teams. And so here we see, uh, you know, we've got a pretty simple environment here laid out with five different teams. You know, underneath this team, we can see that we have a number of different applications. And we can see the currently, uh, you know, the current state of these vulnerabilities. <clears throat> you know, which, uh, you know, how many critical, high, medium, and low uh, vulnerabilities are currently open for a given application. So inside of ThreadFix, we can then drill in and start to look at the state of the system. And so we can load data into ThreadFix in a number of different ways. Uh, you know, we can go in here and manually upload uh, files if we wanted to drag and drop files in. But, uh, and that's great as you're getting started. What we also, uh, a big priority for us with ThreadFix, and we'll talk more about this, but a big priority for us with ThreadFix is to enable a lot of automation. 
uh, again, if uh, you know, folks on this uh, webinar, if you're probably security professionals, uh, I don't suspect that you have a lot of free time on your hands. And if you look at the ratio of application security team members when compared to development team members, uh, you're in a pretty asymmetric environment. And so, uh, you know, the more you can rely on automation, the better shape you're going to be in. And so some of the things that we've had uh, that we do with ThreadFix, we exposed a REST base, a JSON API, so that you can, uh, again, with different native clients, you can talk to that. We have a command line client that wraps that API. So with a single line in a script, if you're doing security testing somewhere else in your environment, you can grab the results of that security testing and load it into ThreadFix. Um, you know, in addition, we now have a Jenkins plugin, and so for organizations that are doing uh, you know, security testing as part of their continuous integration, which is a, you know, a great practice to develop, at the end of your continuous integration runs, you can grab the resulting files and load them into ThreadFix. And as we'll talk a little bit more later, with ThreadFix Enterprise, we offer scan orchestration capabilities so that you can go in and schedule scans with your favorite scanners, uh, store the configurations inside of ThreadFix, set the policy by when you want those scans run, and then one or more scan agents in your environment wake up, call into ThreadFix, and get tasks to, uh, get tasks to run. And so as you do this, ThreadFix takes all the results of these different testing uh, activities that you're performing and pulls them in, normalizes the data, dedupes it, and then tracks it over time. And so ThreadFix, when it gets a new scan, it looks at the previous scan to identify did we get any new vulnerabilities that were identified as the result of this latest scanning? Did any of the old vulnerabilities go away? Have any vulnerabilities that we previously thought uh, were fixed, you know, did any of those get reintroduced between the last test and this most recent testing? And so that allows you to start collecting for individual applications and then rolling up for your portfolio a you know, basically set of data where you see how long it's taking you to address different types of vulnerabilities. We'll talk more about that later as well. Um, also what ThreadFix does, and this is important for organizations that are using multiple testing technologies, with that data normalization, we allow you to dedupe results in an automated way. And so as we go and drill into looking at all the currently open vulnerabilities for this application, you know, we see situations where we have application or where, where we have vulnerabilities like this cross-site scripting vulnerability that was found not just by one scanner, but by AppScan, by Arach9, by W3AF. And so if you're using multiple scanners in your environment, a potential problem that you run into is you get a, you know, you run a scanner, you get a 300-page PDF with a color graph on the front. You know, if you run a second scanner, you get a second 300-page PDF with a different color graph on the front. You can't go to development teams with those types of data blobs and expect them to take action. And so what ThreadFix does is it stitches all this data together, giving you a single view across the different types of testing that you're doing. Again, so in doing this, uh, again, you, as I said, you can manually upload files. We have a REST API, a command line interface, and a Jenkins plugin. It's an important goal of ours to try and make it as easy as possible for you to instrument the testing processes or the development continuous integration processes that you already have in place to take advantage of security scanning that you're already doing. You know, if we look at some changes that we made in the ThreadFix 2.1 development cycle, we've exposed an API for quite a while, but we made a lot of updates to the REST API in the cycle. And that, uh, you know, especially means certain new methods allowing you to script different uh, and additional interactions that you couldn't script before. Uh, and also a big point of feedback from the user community was they wanted better consistency, better versioning. So that was also a focus of ours this time around was to make sure that the API is consistent so that as you start to script these interactions around your organization, you know what to expect from the API um, and you also know what to expect change-wise as you go from version to version. You know, the benefit of this is that you get more automation. Um, again, looking at some of the larger ThreadFix installations that we, uh, you know, that, that we work with, that's a huge focus is saying, I've got all these developers around the world, I've got all these different development teams, I've convinced some of them to start incorporating security testing, how do I pull the results of all that testing up into a single place so that I don't have to chase those development teams down? And again, with the API updates and the you know, command line uh, utility that wraps that, again, a big focus of ours was let's make it as easy as possible for organizations to script these interactions and to automate as much as possible. 
know, we talked a little bit about this before. You know, what does the thread fix do with scan results? You know, pulls in the results of the scanning, diffs it against previous ones, and normalizes this data. And, uh, you know, we've always done this for static to static. We've always done it for dynamic to da dynamic. And a new capability that was introduced with the 2.0 release of ThreadFix and was further extended with the 2.1 release is ThreadFix's hybrid analysis mapping technology that allows us to map for certain languages and frameworks. It allows us to merge static and dynamic results. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that more uh, as, as well. Uh, and that research was done in conjunction with the U.S. Department of Homeland Security Science and Technology Directorate, um, where we've been working with, uh, with some folks over there, and they've been supporting our efforts to create this hybrid analysis mapping capability. Um, so again, you know, much like we're thankful with the Riverbed folks for working with them and their contributions, uh, we've also been very excited to work with uh, DHS and Science and Technology. And so we'll look a little bit, um, you know, we talk about this vulnerability merge, we can look a little more specifically at how that works in a hybrid situation, where if, you, if we drill into the results here, we see that certain vulnerabilities, in this case, were found by AppScan, you know, certain vulnerabilities that were found both by AppScan on the dynamic side and Fortify, in this case, on the static side. And so we can drill further into those and see that the hybrid analysis mapping technology creates a model of the attack surface of the application and keeps track of the source code responsible for each portion of the attack surface. And this allows us to merge those static and dynamic results together. Uh, again, a big focus here being how do we save security analysts time? If you're, you know, in, in the absence of an automated merge, what we see in so many organizations is the security analysts are forced to, you know, go back on their own and use something like Microsoft Excel to stitch together the results of these different testing technologies. It's a, hor it's a horrible use of security analyst time. Again, everybody in the application security industry or, or information security in general, there's, uh, you know, there's a shortage of talent. Uh, and, you know, we, we, we you know, it's our view that we can't have these really valuable assets uh, spending a lot of time undertaking these very low value activities like stitching stuff together. They need to be focused on working with development teams, helping to drive remediation and reporting, uh, you know, analysis up through management so people can understand the risk associated with their software. Um, and so again, with our static to static, with our dynamic to dynamic, and now with our static to dynamic hybrid analysis mapping, a big focus is how do we make this management of the data as easy as possible for the folks that are using this stuff. Another fun benefit of the, uh, of the hybrid analysis mapping technology is because we have that understanding of the application, uh, we understand how the application's attack surface work, uh, it actually lets us clean up the results of a lot of dynamic scanning in certain situations. And so, uh, you know, for folks that are familiar with applications, web applications that have a RESTful style of URL creation, what you see in a lot of cases are uh, you know, you'll have, in this case, like what we see, where we have app scan results that were reported with, uh, you know, URL of 5, URL of 6, URL of 7. An analyst looking at these knows that this is not, these aren't three different vulnerabilities. They're actually just three pieces of evidence that the scanner found for one vulnerability. And so using the model that we make via the hybrid analysis mapping technology, we can actually collapse these down so that analysts only have to look at the vulnerability once. And we provide a view into uh, you know, the, the, the true nature of that vulnerability as well as, uh, uh, you know, links back to the source code that a, that a, a programmer is going to need to look at in order to address this stuff. <clears throat> um, so again, we talked a little bit about the hybrid analysis mapping. Um, and that's allowed us to do some really interesting stuff, both, uh, you know, from a, a raw technology standpoint, but also from a data management standpoint. Okay, so the second thing ThreadFix lets you do, you know, the first thing looking is saying, how do I create a view of all my applications? I need to create this application portfolio, and I need to load in all the data of the various vulnerabilities that we've detected across the vendors we're using, across the technologies we're using. You know, once you've got that data loaded in, you know, that, that's great, but your, your, your life actually gets better when these vulnerabilities start to get fixed. And so the next thing ThreadFix lets you do is it lets you prioritize application risk decisions based on data. 
<clears throat> and so again, you have all these different data sources. You've loaded all of these uh, you know, disparate testing activities that you have. You're loading those all into one place. And so based on that, you can start to slice and dice this data. And so one of the, one of the I, I think one of the more interesting capabilities that we've added in ThreadFix 2.1 is the analytics and the vulnerability filtering. And you can do that at the application level, at the team level, or across the entire enterprise. And this lets you slice and dice the vulnerability data <clears throat> so that you can figure out what are, the, uh, you know, what are the vulnerabilities that we need to focus on the most. You know, which are the vulnerabilities that we have that are the most serious that are exposed, um, you know, that have been exposed for the longest. And you can also, you know, using this filtering capability, go in and save custom filters. So if you have policies, you can save those policies or scans that identify violations of those policies and come back and report on those. And you can do that both via the user interface you know, and as well as the API. And so if you have custom reporting requirements, you can do that as well. And so the idea here is to allow you as security analysts and security managers to drill in or focus on the most important vulnerabilities, uh, the most important vulnerabilities first. And so, for example, we go in and look at the analytics here. You know, this is a list of all the vulnerabilities that are currently open in this system. <clears throat> so we can go in and say, for example, we only want to look for vulnerabilities that were found by two or more scanners, right? Um, you know, whether those were static and dynamic or, you know, two dynamic scanners. Well, let's say that we only want to go in and look at the vulnerabilities that were identified by two or more scanners, with the thinking being those are perhaps less likely to be false positives, um, or those are ones that are going to be easier for attackers to identify because two, scan or two or more scanners were able to identify those. You know, furthermore, you can go in and look at results from, a, you know, from specific scanners, <clears throat> you know, or you could go in and look at you know, specific vulnerabilities. And as I said, you're able to go in and save the different filters. And so let's say that we want to see all the old critical or cross-site scripting vulnerabilities that we have. And so this is a list of all the cross-site scripting vulnerabilities stored in the system that are still open after 90 days. You know, or let's say that you have a policy that says that any critical or high vulnerability has to be resolved within 30 days. Again, you can save that filter, and this shows you a list of here's all the vulnerabilities that reflect a, uh, you know, an exception or a lack of adherence to that policy. And so you can see this both via the user interface or you can script it via the, you know, via the REST API if you want to set up an automated process on a weekly basis, for example, to say, I've got a certain policy, I want to get an email showing me all the violations of those policies. And so this allows you very, very powerful filtering capabilities that you can go to identify the severity, to identify you know, if things are open or closed, to identify if they've been passed off to development teams, and so on and so forth. Uh, and again, this is one of the things that was introduced during the 2.1 uh, development cycle for ThreadFix that I think gives a tremendous amount of capability, a tremendous amount of flexibility, and passes that in the hands of security analysts and security managers. Um, again, so with the vulnerability filtering, you can filter the different data on a variety of factors and save those, uh, save those filters for future use. <clears throat> you, know, you can also do a lot of reporting. What we see in too many organizations is they have silos. They have a static analysis program that is doing things and getting results. They have a dynamic analysis program that is doing things and getting results. They have a red team, you know, an internal red team or an external red team or pen testing group that is doing stuff and getting results. But it's challenging or impossible to get a single view into that uh, reporting across those different silos of information. And so with ThreadFix, because you can load all this data through a single location, uh, through, a single, uh, you know, through, through, through a single engine, and because you're seeing when vulnerabilities appear and when they go away, you can start to report not just about how one specific technology is working, but how your program as a whole is working. And that can run as simple as uh, you know, basic trending reports <clears throat> to see how vulnerabilities are changing over time. Uh, you can also look at a single point in time. And, and a really interesting report that, uh, that, that I like to refer to is the uh, vulnerability progress by type. And so what this lets you do is to drill in and look, what are the most common vulnerabilities that we have 
what percentage of those vulnerabilities have we actually fixed? What's the average age of the remaining vulnerabilities? And what's the average time to close? And so folks out there who are familiar with, for example, the White Hat or the Veracode uh, reports that they issue, <clears throat> this provides the data that you can use to benchmark your program against other folks, um, you know, against these third-party industry sources of data. And so this lets you, for example, go and say, hey, we're an, or we're an organization in this ver vertical, and, you know, what it says from the data is, on average, folks of our size in this vertical fix 90% of the cross-site scripting vulnerabilities within 50 days, right? We're fixing 60% and it's taking us 75 days. So that lets you go to management and say, we need to devote more resources to remediation because we're at risk of falling out of step with our peers. You know, and that's um, such a better conversation than going to management and saying cross-site scripting is scary. Um, you know, that is a non-starter uh, in most organizations that we've worked with. This allows you to have a much more quantitative view of your application and software security program. So you can go and say, here's third-party data, here's what we're seeing, we need to change our behaviors. You know, in a similar way, if you're doing better than the average, you can go and say, you know, hey, you know, the industry average is 90% fixed in 50 days, we're fixing 100% in 25 days, clearly I deserve a bonus for my effective use of scarce resources. The important thing, uh, as, we, as we like to joke, is that you can make the statistics lie however you want, but this calculates all the statistics for you. And again, allows you to take a much more quantitative view of your software security program so that you can start to talk in, in terms of you know, time to live and average fix rate as opposed to talking about individual vulnerabilities. Finally, first we've created this application portfolio, we've loaded data in, um, and we've started to make some risk decisions to say, here's the standards we want to set, here are the vulnerabilities, the classes of vulnerabilities, the severity of vulnerabilities that we want to go after first. You know, the next step is to translate these vulnerabilities to developers in the tools they're already using. It happens way too frequently that we see organizations, again, the, you run a security scan or you have an outside pen tester come in, they generate some sort of a giant uh, you know, PDF report with the obligatory color graph. That gets handed over to the development team with sticky notes pasted to it, or it gets an email to the development team. <clears throat> you know, that shows a, 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 a lack of understanding of how development teams work. Uh, right. Most development teams manage their workload from their defect tracking tools, you know, whether that's uh, a JIRA or an HP Quality Center, uh, Bugzilla. You know, again, we, uh, you know, we support a number of them and allow you to extend ThreadFix to support additional ones. <clears throat> what we've found, the most, one of the most important techniques or one of the most important markers of software security programs that are actually making progress is they work to translate these vulnerabilities, which is what security people care about, translate those into being software defects, which is what developers care about. It's not fair to ask a developer to manage 90% of their workload out from their defect tracking system and 10% of their workload from a giant PDF that you printed out and put sticky notes on. Right? You know, similarly, it's telling a developer, well, hey, I know, you know, I know you do a bunch of work over here, or, or even worse, telling them, I don't understand, I don't actually know or understand that you do most of your work over here, but log into this system over here to get your vulnerabilities that we want you to fix. A much more effective technique is to reach out to the development teams with the tools they're already using so that they don't have to learn a new tool and they don't have to, uh, you know, they don't have to learn a new system, they don't have to change what they're doing the vulnerability workload goes there alongside their other workload. You know, what we've found is developers care about security. I think there's a perception in the industry that developers don't. Developers care about security, but they also care about new features that a hotshot VP promised to an important customer, right? And they care about security, but they also care about non-security related bugs in the system that are degrading you know, users for the experience of the, of the software. And they care about security, but they also care about performance problems. And so it's important for development teams and security teams to work together to understand how these different concerns compete with one another and come to an understanding of what's going to be fixed. And a great way for security teams to take the first step in this direction is to work with the developers using the tools that they're already, yeah, that they're already experienced using. 
you know, this is typically just from a you know, best practice standpoint. Uh, you know, you, we usually don't see a lot of mapping of one-to-one -one between vulnerabilities and defects. Again, if you're running scans, uh, you know, if you run a scan and find 500 cross-site scripting vulnerabilities, you probably don't want to make those into 500 different defects because the QA manager is probably going to find a way to murder you in the parking lot. All right, it's just not a, not a great strategy because it's going to take more time to administer those bugs than it will to actually fix them. But what we have found is that it can be useful to go in and cluster similar vulnerabilities, right, <clears throat> so that you can cut and paste in certain cases remediation code. Um, you, know, you can cluster vulnerabilities by type. You can cluster them by severity. You know, certain environments you have a you know, service level agreement that says you have to fix critical vulnerabilities within seven days or whatever it might be. Okay, well, if we're going to have to do an out-of-cycle change, let's put all the work that we're doing for the out-of-cycle change uh, you know, into one defect so that they can work on it. You know, or in cases where a certain developer owns the code, you might say in our, you know, for the for e-commerce team, Steve owns the checkout process, and anytime anybody else touches it, everything breaks. Okay, good. Well, let's take all the vulnerabilities that are in the checkout part of the application, bundle those together, and ship those over to uh, you know, to Steve, the developer. Again, this is something that gets determined typically with the security analyst working with the development team leads. But the point is, in ThreadFix, what we try to allow you to do using the filtering capability that we talked about before is slice and dice this vulnerability data so that you can package it in a way that's going to be the most consumable by the developers. They're the ones, ultimately, they're going to have to take action on your part to get these things fixed. And so it's important to take as much friction out of that process as possible. And so just to take a look at how that, uh, at how that works, if we drill into this application here, and we see that we've got a number of vulnerabilities that are open, um, what we see is that we've got uh, these two vulnerabilities have been packaged together and uh, shipped over to, uh, to JIRA here. And what we see from ThreadFix is, ThreadFix knows that those defects created for those vulnerabilities, those defects are still open. So the developers have not yet said that, the, said that those have been fixed. However, if we look down here, we see these two, uh, we see these two authorization bypass vulnerabilities. Those have been bundled together, shipped over to the developers inside of their JIRA instance. The developers have done you know, whatever process they do to assign bugs to people. They've made changes to the code and checked that bug in to say that it's resolved. As a security analyst, I can see that the developers now think that this has been fixed. So I can go and rerun, in this case, a Fortify scan that identified those vulnerabilities in the first place, and hopefully those vulnerabilities drop out of this list of open vulnerabilities you know, after, the, you know, after the results of the new scan have been run. If they don't, that's an indication that as a security analyst, I need to reach out to the developers more directly in order to you know, let them know, like, hey, guys, I saw, that you, I saw that you fixed this potential SQL problem, but you used the HTML encoding functions to do it, or whatever it might be. Yep. So, again, the idea here being load all this data in and transfer it to the developers in a format that is going to be consumable for them. <clears throat> so let's, uh, let's take a recap where we look at, uh, you know, we, we talk about some of the things that we've seen. Again, the first step is using ThreadFix to create a portfolio of the different applications you have in your environment and loading the results of all the different testing that you are undertaking into that. So you can have a full unified list of all the vulnerabilities that you are, uh, you know, that, that you're managing inside of your environment, regardless of the way that they were found, whether it was static scanning, dynamic scanning, or manual testing, regardless of the scanning tool or service that found them. Give you a single unified view. After that, then, you can slice and dice this data to identify the vulnerabilities that expose you to the most risk so that you can make decisions based on data about which ones you want to address first. Once you've made those decisions, then you transition these vulnerabilities over to the development teams, so you're know, using the tools that they already use so that they can resolve these vulnerabilities with the least amount of friction. So if we look at what's next for ThreadFix, um, you know, we're, uh, we're always working, you know, because of the massive amount of data being generated from, these, uh, you know, from all these different testing efforts, we're always working with reporting and analytics. And again, we made, I think, a great stride, uh, you know, a, lot, a lot of great changes in the 2.1 development series, uh, and, and I can tell you we've got some even more exciting stuff 
in the 2.2 development series, but we're always pushing to figure out how can we you know, how can we slice and dice this data, how can we present this to security analysts, to security managers, and to other stakeholders so that they can most effectively make decisions. Uh, so that's going to be an area we continue to push. Uh, also, the hybrid analysis mapping. In the 2.1 release, we added support for ASP.NET Web Forms and ASP.NET MVC. Uh, upcoming support is for Java and Struts. So if your organization uses Java and Struts, uh, you know, that may be interesting and exciting for you. We already support Java using the Spring Framework as well as Java just using JSPs. Uh, we're also always looking to import additional data sources, and so we're looking at importing the results of different IAS or interactive application security testing scanning, as well as known vulnerable components, uh, you know, the other scanners that are out there. We already have support for the OWASP dependency check vulnerable component scanner, and we're looking to add uh, support for additional ones on top of that. One of the questions that we get uh, quite frequently is, what's the difference between the open source thread fix community edition and the, uh, you know, and the, and the commercial software, uh, you know, commercial software of thread fix enterprise? And the, and, and again, we think that's a great advantage for thread fix uh, to be available under those two different models. Uh, again, uh, and there will be a link to this in the slides. Uh, you can go to GitHub, you can go to the download site, pull down the community edition, use that in your environment. Um, <clears throat> What you get with the enterprise edition are the types of things that we've seen most large enterprises that roll out thread fix, the types of things that they want. Um, you know, the first thing is phone and email support. Um, you know, obviously we have a Google group for thread fix. We try to help people that run into problems. Um, in a larger environment or where you have multiple stakeholders that are worried about this, um, being able to call in an issue to open a support ticket and to have that driven through to resolution uh, can be tremendously valued. Uh, you know, also, again, we work, uh, this creates a formal relationship with our enterprise customers, and so that gives you, or that gives the you know, licensees greater access to product management and development teams if you have particular concerns that you want addressed, uh, you know, particular technologies that you want supported. Uh, in addition, the Enterprise Edition gives you the security capabilities that you need for larger environments. In the Community Edition, all of the users are essentially administrative users where everybody can do anything and they all have access to all the applications and all the data. In ThreadFix Enterprise, we allow you to do authentication uh, via Active Directory or LDAP, so you can piggyback on top of your enterprise's authentication infrastructure. And we also provide the capability for role-based and database authorization. Uh, again, as you start to in bring more teams on board, um, it may be less accessible such that Team A can see the results of the testing that Team B is doing. And so with the Enterprise Edition for those larger, more complex environments, we allow you to start to separate those things out. Um, also, proxy support, if you're connecting, by, if you need to connect out through a proxy server to get to uh, you know, software as a service providers for scanning. Uh, and as I said, also, the ThreadFix Enterprise offers the scan orchestration capability, and what that lets you do is it lets you go in and um, schedule scans for different applications and say, let's say I want to have a daily scan with uh, AppScan uh, or you know, Acunetics at uh, you know, 9 p.m. I want to add that to the scheduled scans. <clears throat> And then what ThreadFix does internally is it manages a scan queue. And then those tasks are picked up by the various, uh, you know, by, by different scan agents that you deploy. Your scans get run on the schedule that you set out, and that data is automatically loaded into ThreadFix. And so with the Enterprise Edition, we also give you the capability to automate a lot of this work. Um, again, with the idea being how do we make it as easy as possible for security analysts and security managers to get the latest data loaded into ThreadFix so that they can focus not on chasing down and running scans on their own or not on chasing down development teams to get the results of scans that happen in their environment, but instead to have all that data rolled up into a single location um, so that they can manage that out through resolution. Like those are the high value tasks that we see for security teams uh, is not, you know, not spending time you know, running automated scanners and loading in data, but instead sifting through that data, identifying the most serious vulnerabilities, and then acting as a consultant to the development team to help them with remediation. Uh, here's some important links. The main ThreadFix website is www.threadfix.org. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we have a GitHub site um, where you can watch the development of ThreadFix. 
Uh, we also have a GitHub wiki that provides product documentation. Uh, and a ThreadFix Google group where the community folks can, if you have uh, if you have questions or issues, you can so you can submit there, and we uh, you know and, and we obviously monitor that and and, and respond as as we can. All right, great. Um, well, now I'd like to turn it over for questions. Uh, is there anybody out there that has questions? If you'd like to, uh, if you, if you could ask those via the uh, via the uh, WebEx chat function. We have a couple that are queued up. Uh, so we've got a, a question of whether or not to PHP support is on the roadmap. Uh, PHP support is on the roadmap for the hybrid analysis mapping. I mean, obviously, for uh, and just to be clear, for static scanners that already support PHP, for dynamic scanners that I mean really don't care what the application is. Uh, uh, we, you know, support whatever results the tool has, uh, has, but we, but if we're talking about that static to dynamic merging, we do have PHP support on the roadmap. Um, I don't know that that will necessarily be in the 2.2 release, um, but if you're, if that's a, uh, if that's a priority for you, um, or if you're willing to act as a beta tester for our PHP support, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, I'm, I'm just Dan at denimgroup.com. Reach out to me, and I can get you linked up with our product manager, uh, Brian Mather, and he can, uh, um, you know, and, and he can, uh, you know, work with you to, to, to figure out ways we can support you with that. Uh, for the community version, yes, so there's an error log that you can look at. If you look at the, uh, or so the question is, uh, for the community edition, if there are errors, is there a log you can look at? There's a couple places that you can look for uh, log information. Uh, the Tomcat server that's running ThreadFix, that has a logs directory that has the Catalina, the you know, standard out log, as well as the log for j logging that we do. Uh, in addition, there is, a, if there are unhandled exceptions thrown, what you can do is go over to this uh, right button here and go down and look at errors, and that will show you uh, that'll show you a list of, um, uh, of of errors that were caught as well as the stack trace. And so, in addition to the application logs, we also have that uh, that that database based error logging for for unhandled exceptions. And so, uh, yeah, if you if you are running into errors um, and are going to submit a bug. Please take a look in those logs as well as in the database error log. And if you can submit those stack traces along with your uh, you know, with, with your bug request, uh, that those are a huge help for us to go in and uh, drill down. Um, okay. So uh, next question is compared to Fortify, what's the main uh, main difference between the but besides the bug tracker integration? Uh, and so, uh, from, from this question, I'm assuming that, you're, that you mean like the Fortify SSC. Um, you know, obviously, Fortify is a technology where we can import the results. It's you know, a static analysis tool that we can you, you can load into uh, that you can load into ThreadFix. Um, the way that I would compare ThreadFix to um, any of the you know, both Fortify SSC or you know, the IBM's server side product or any vendor's server side product, a focus for us. Um, is to handle these uh, to handle this process in a vendor agnostic manner or in a vendor neutral manner, so that if you're just using Fortify and have SSC installed and that supports your business process, then more power to you. That's that's fantastic. The areas where ThreadFix, uh, where we see ThreadFix. Um, be, become more important or where there's a stronger imperative for a solution like ThreadFix is an environment if you have, if you're doing Fortify static scanning, but also app scan dynamic scanning, and you need to manage those results in a single place. Um, you know, uh, or if you're doing, you know, uh, again, uh, you know, NTO scanning or something like that, where you have multiple vendors where their management tools don't do a great job of supporting them. Uh, you know, in addition to environments, if you're only running a desktop scanner, what ThreadFix gives you the ability to do is to track an application portfolio and to track the results of that scanning over time. So even if you've only got one scanning technology, but it's a desktop-based version of that scanning, um, 
then you know, what ThreadFix lets you do is essentially keep track of that portfolio of applications over time and do reporting. Um, so what we see in a lot of environments where they just have a desktop scanner is they end up with a shared drive or a, 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 you know, a, a SharePoint document repository with a bunch of tests loaded in there, a bunch of test data stored there, but there's not a great way to extract a lot of data across the testing. Uh, and so those, again, you know, kind of multi-vendor environments uh, or environments where you're only doing desktop scanning, those are the ones where you typically see the most um, value out of a ThreadFix deployment. Um, question about what about the sticks and taxi formats? Um, we've looked at the sticks. I'm less familiar with taxi. I'm, uh, I'm more familiar with the sticks. We've looked at that before. We have a, uh, you know, what we've created in, you know, working with, uh, we're looking at what the other vendors have done. We've created a uh, format called SSVL um, that we can, that you can import, um, you know, and we have some conversion tools that'll let you make this, uh, you know, make data in this format and load it into ThreadFix. Um, we haven't had a lot of questions recently about sticks, and again, I'm not as familiar with Taxi. Um, if there's enough demand from folks, uh, you know, in order to in order to pay, support those different formats, we would be more than happy to import and export them. Um, you know, this, the challenge on our end, from an engineering standpoint, is to uh, support these uh, is to support and maintain these different technologies over time. But um, again, we'll, I'll, I'll take a look at uh, and get refreshed on Six and Taxi, and uh, in the blog post that we put up with links to the recording as well as the slides, um, I'll get a more thorough response to that. Appreciate everybody spending uh, you know, spending their uh, you know, lunch time or whatever time it is where you are. Uh, appreciate everybody spending some time with us. Again, uh, you know, the 2.1 release, we've uh, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot that went into that, and we're seeing uh, a lot of great response from the community. If you guys have suggestions or feedback, uh, feel free to either contact me directly, again, dan at denimgroup.com or on, at Daniel Cornell on Twitter, um, or submit a uh, question to the Google Groups list or a uh, feature request or a bug to the GitHub tracker, and uh, you know, we'd love to hear from you. That's one of the great things about ThreadFix is having the opportunity to, to work with uh, a variety of folks across the spectrum with uh, you know, the problem of getting their software security program up and running and running in a much more quantitative way. So. Thank you guys for uh, coming out today. Uh, appreciate it and looking forward to interacting with uh, folks in the future. Thank you for attending this live Denim Group webcast. You may now disconnect and we will be sharing the slides and the audio soon.